derisive dialect. All right. Derisive. De that's the that's a good uh, backhanded compliment. <laughs> yeah, I think it. Speaking of plain English for the recording, I, I tried to do like a, a Iron Light thing. You guys? No, it's cool. It's cool. It, it, I like it. Listen, I don't think you'll ever top Iranian Light Detector. That's still gonna be <laughs> at rocking the leaderboard. It's so <laughs> what do you think of the Israeli platypus? Or the Irish goodbye? Yeah. 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 The platypus is a, that's a callback. Wait till your episode about riddles. We'll shout out the Israeli platypus. The solution to a riddle that never should have been. Mercy mild, boys. In any case, uh, special episode about names. What's in a name? A lot of things. Or sometimes nothing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Certainly letters. Mm. Are letters always in a name? Do all languages have letters? Got a lot of names without letters, probably. That's a good point. Like, like what? Name I what mean, name? written language kind of didn't evolve until a long time after spoken language. So. Mm. Yeah, but like, we can always take any sound and convert it into words after. What about ASL names? Does ASL have words? It is that what you call a single gesture? Is it still a word? That's a good question. I don't guess. Put in the comments below. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so laughs> yeah. Um. Anyways. Uh. So, I mean, we spend a lot of time designing certain elements of our world and our game, and we want to give them names that are worthy. Names that you know, kind of, are like a bow that you put on top. Um. And it it just it doesn't feel right to give something that you care so much about, a uh, name that you don't really like, you know? So it's, for me, it's kind of uh, a, a point of great anxiety where I, I like rack my brain and slam my head against the wall until I get something good. But I, I usually am happy with the final product. Um, anyways. Naming what things. Else? Yeah, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> players are awful. I will say, yeah. <laughs> they're just awful. They're awful. <laughs> terrible. You, you can't... First row of naming things, come up with cool name sounds. Second row, no, I think no matter what your naming strategy is, you need to have a screen for dick jokes. Yes, You need to like exactly. go through everything and be like, how can this be made phallic? Exactly. Um, yeah, I was blasted. I was watching um, like an interview with Rob McElhenney, the guy who does Always Sunny last night, and he said that... Um, Apparently, a lot of game designers have this term called TTP, time to penis. Whenever they <laughs> they create something in their game, if it if it can affect the environment, they have to track how long it takes before that thing is used to make a phallic symbol. Um, and I, yeah, we could definitely extend that to the names that we come up with. That's a genius. Yeah. <laughs> um, my uh, first like PC for for our first real campaign that we did. With Josh as the DM, his name was Jizo, and that was cool, right? Sweet it kind of Jizo. It's it like it sounds kind of like Jesus, and he was kind of like a Christ-like figure. Absolutely, um, sandals and stuff. Jizo is also um, like a Shinto god. Uh, I didn't know that going into it. None of that mattered. Like, None of it um, mattered. Yeah, it sounded like jizz. Yeah, like just. I mean, the, <laughs> our group was cool with it, but um, they had posted the artist I had commissioned. Um, posted the picture on uh, Reddit, and I was like, you know what? I kind of hate everybody on Reddit today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That's just how it is, you I know? Guess so. On the internet. Anyway. <laughs> Any game you're in for as long as you're in, see, I said you're in, D&D, &D, <laughs> you're just going to have nothing better to do than spin the wheels, like, of your brain. And I guess, I guess things just come up a lot for most people when you're free associating. Yeah. That's how she goes. Depends on your game. All right, so um, naming. Names. I don't know. Let's let's. I I thought it'd be cool to kick off by talking about our own names a little bit. So my name is James Shepik. Uh, it's the same name as my dad. It's the same name as my grandfather. And one of the great betrayals of my young life is knowing that the name doesn't really like. The, I mean, it was given to my grandpa just because, like Jim. That's just the name that American kids. Uh, in the 40s have. He was kid um, number what, three, four? Oh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. didn't have a gym um, yet, you know, figured. You know? Exactly. <laughs> and and I, I go down the rabbit hole, like, people talk about the names, meanings. I'm, it means supplanter in Hebrew. 
I, nobody in my family has ever supplanted anything. Um, it's cool, it, but it's like, I don't know if this is a name that I'm going to live up to, so... I don't know, it's, it's, there's like this juxtaposition of it, my name being kind of like my family heirloom in a way, and at the center of it, it just like means nothing to me. Mm. Or, or the, the meaning that the name commonly has, and the reason that it was in common parlance has like no bearing on me whatsoever. It's like an empty locket. It kind of stings. Yeah. I mean... If you make it to be, I guess. I, I'm, in, I'm in a similar camp, though, right? I'm Josh. I mean, name a more prototypical dude name. <laughs> Joshua Nicholas Jordan. I have three first names. Yeah. I could it's cool. Anything. It's cool. It is what it is, man. I mean... I mean, some people have two first names, but you've got three. So yeah. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. <on> <laughs> you did Adam Smith. I don't know. I can't. Whatever. It's pretty generic. But the fact of the matter is... Um, you can either take a name with a ton of meaning and then like build a relationship to that prescribed meaning, or you can start with a name kind of nonsensical or not important and then just, I don't know, build your own relationship to it or your own thing. That I have so sense. many alter egos. Like, if I had a sweet name, like, uh, shout out Lourdes, uh, one of my students who will never see this, but it's like, if you have a sweet name, I don't know, maybe you don't come up with alter egos like Arkansas. It's badass. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about I Your name's awesome. My yeah. name is dope, but I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still have all these alternate yeah, never names. Mind. So. It is kind of, like, interesting, the juxtaposition, though, between having a name, Josh, that your parents just were like, oh, that sounds nice, yeah, versus, yeah. like, you've got a cousin named Atticus after Atticus Finch, right? Yeah. And it's, it's cool to be named after somebody. Even if it's, yeah, even if it's not somebody you want to model yourself after, even being different. Would be kind of sweet. Yeah, I suppose so. That is what she is. I mean, there's some other like pitfalls with names that you have to avoid. Like, my name's Houston, and so whenever I meet anyone for the first time, there's that giveaway joke of Houston, we have a problem, oh, which yeah. just gets fired off no oh. matter what. I'm, I'm like in my twenties, first couple Still weeks, minutes. yeah. <laughs> like, and there's the the sort of secondary problem of people who like don't quite remember your name being like, what's that kid's name, Austin? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Dallas? Dallas, Austin, yeah, Dallas. Yeah, I get yeah. Dallas all the time. I've never gotten Dallas. I, I absolutely I've never have. met a person named Dallas. <laughs> I think I, I think I've heard like a like a family member who just kind of like met you in passing, being like, "What was that kid's name again?" Dallas, Austin. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah, people have associations in their mind with like certain words, and Houston is one of them, right? Also, my middle initial starts with a T. Everyone assumes it's Texas. It's not. <laughs> now that I've never thought of somehow. <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> but I've never been to Houston. Like when I hear Houston, I think of you. I don't think of the place in Texas. Right. I, I don't. I haven't been there. I have no plans on going there either. Despite the kind of given destiny. I've been a sweet. I've been a sweet. It's it's sweet. You go. I mean, if you end up ever in the southern U.S. with no other re regime. Yeah, I, I guess. Texas is kind of cringe, but you can do a lot worse than Oh, yeah. Um, shout out Texas Jack Richards. Um, rest in peace to a real one. Buried just outside of uh, Houston, Texas. Wow. All right, Pete. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a good name. Yeah. Texas Jack Richards. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. <sighs> they put the Texas in quotation marks, but I'm not deceived. That was definitely the first certificate. <laughs> but besides being cringe in the in the Houston we have a problem, you've done sweet things with your name, Mr. Hunt the Lumpus. Like Yeah, yeah, there's like some some inside jokes. Yeah, or, you or come from naming there. traditions like Jim does, kind of. That's yeah. Sweet. Um, on my mom's side, everyone in my family is named after a city. So my mom's name is Paris, mm -hmm. my sister's name's London. Um, and on my dad's side, everyone has the initials HTW, so they had to find the, the H name in there somewhere. That's awesome. Um, I'm glad I didn't get, like, Harrisonburg or something, <laughs> but um, they landed on Houston. Yeah, Harrisonburg, yeah. that'd be rough. Yeah, I'm, I mean, better than Hartford, right? Hartford? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have some names in the bank, you know, <laughs> just in case. If you got a daughter, you've got a Havana coming up, and Havana. if you have a son... I guess we start cracking up the juniors because yeah. I can't. <laughs> Hamburg is not a great thing to go through elementary school. That's an O. Yeah. No guac. But fine names are. But we can do better than our parents did, right? Absolutely. We can we can name things 
uh, with some justification. And stuff. Yeah. So we'll do that as good as we can for D and D and elsewhere. Yeah. Um. So one of the topics that I wanted to talk about is nominative determinism, which basically just means um, like name driven outcome. It's like a, a phenomenon or a hypothesis in psychology that people tend to gravitate towards uh, professions that um, are like occupational or that um, professions that reflect their last name. So, um, like, a good example is Usain Bolt. His last name is Bolt. Like, fast like a lightning bolt. Um, and not just occupations, but, like, there's some aspect of a name-driven outcome in a lot of names. I mean, if you, if you name your kid Ace, chances are your kid's probably going to be, be pretty winner. cool. Um, we <laughs> see this effect with Chad's and Stacy's, right? I mean, the, the name... Chad evokes like the the jock, right? Um, and that's like an example of how we kind of parse nominative determinism for people who don't know that word, right? That's kind of the go-to example. Um, another great example, I think, is Donald Trump. Um, he changed his parents when they immigrated changed their last name from Trump to Trump. And uh, apparently during the um, election cycle, uh, like 2015, um, people kind of realized this and somebody made um, a Chrome extension called the Drumfinator, which changes every instance of Trump that appears in your browser uh, to Drumf. And it's like, I mean, Trump evokes like the Trump card, uh, like it's, it's a very like winner name. Um, but Drumf on the other hand sounds kind of dorky. Uh, no offense to any drumps that, drumps that might be out there in the audience. <laughs> One of our, like, 18 views is gonna be, like, this <laughs> Ilyana drum who just <laughs> flips her table. We're right. so sorry. We apologize. <laughs> hey, man. Kids are, kids are mean. Kids can be mean. Um, kids can be cruel. But, yeah, it's... So, that's, like, something that you might want to worry about when you make names. Uh, I think some of it might be rooted in the fact that um, a lot of people in the English language tradition um, had occupational last names. Um, I have uh, friends whose last name are Barber and Carpenter, and of course, um, they were both majoring in chemistry. Uh, <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, you're farmers and you're butchers and there's a ton of those. Smith, right? Yeah, the most basic name. But historically, I mean, in English-speaking sure. countries, you'd be named, at, or like you know, in early English, you'd be named. Your last name would reflect your job title. Totally right. right. Yeah. Uh, modern day names bear evidence of their traditions because sons too, right? If you're named after your father, you'd have yeah, uh, uh, John sons and Eric sons. I think that sons. that's more. Um, like the Scandinavian tradition, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, there's mm -hmm. the two, like in English, the two big, um, like surname schema are named after your occupation or named after your lineage. Um, that's not true in every other language. A lot of Japanese surnames, um, are, uh, reflect like the places, uh, where these people are from. That's sweet, too. Oh, that's like the Von whatever location scheme. Yeah. Well, right? Okay. A lot of examples. Mercy. I don't know what a Jordan does. I guess it's a river. It's probably the death of the river. Yeah. I think it's also a country. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where which came first? Country or the river? Dropped that's a good question. Well. It's yeah. probably with the Google. I'm not going to do it right now. It's probably the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. It comes from Yardane, I'll bet. Hebrew. <laughs> Oh, mercy. So nominative determinism, you really think? You're well, going to be a... My last name was Webb, which derives from Weaver. Weber. Yeah, and I Weber. work on the web, so... That's... I <laughs> never thought of that! <laughs> oh my god! Uh, it's in there. It, it yeah. hurts. Nominative... De this is one of those things that just, just hurts my head. I don't like it. The thing <laughs> I don't is, like it at all. People say that a lot to me as a kid, and I kind of think sometimes, like, maybe it, like, reinforces... Don't you dare. Don't maybe, you dare. What if? Who knows? Maybe I just felt better about it because everyone's Dude, like, Dude, yeah, you're, you're Mr. World Wide Web. I'm kind of... I've ne like, I've never thought that before. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah, we call him Web Lord. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know, maybe. You have to also consider the possibility that the kind of parents who are going to name their kid or keep the name Bolt 
are the kind of parents that are going to put their kid into track, like, from day it, zero. It could be! I'm it just, could be! Um, I'm looking for any way out of this being true, so I don't have to name my kid, like, Bajillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's... Uh, George <laughs> Yeah. Actually, a lot of, like, um, recently freed slaves um, in the South named their children, like, King, My King. Oh, uh, yeah! Princess, yeah. That tracks. All sorts of Pershing, like, basically royal names. For that reason, right? Yeah. Uh, is that the origin of the surname Freeman? I think so. Like, That's awesome. Well, that I think predates even that. Like, if you were free as a slave in the, or as a former slave in the South, you probably had to be called Freeman, like all the time. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, like yeah. it was probably necessary. Um, Just in case. Right? Yeah. <laughs> on the off chance. Um, yeah, I, I mean, in a lot of ways, surnames are like uh, a sort of like epitaph. It's a way to narrow down when there are people with the same name. It's like, which Josh is it? Well, it's the Josh who lives by the Jordan River. Which <laughs> which Houston are you talking about? Oh, it's Mr. Worldwide Web. Yeah. Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I get a river. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, the river one. <laughs> no, it's fine. From this day on, you know me as Editor. Shout out Orson Scott Card. And my username for everything. Yeah. Um... um but I, so when you name places or people or uh, anything in your game, you can kind of bake a little bit of destiny into it by naming it after something that you want it to reflect. Um, more on that later. That is profoundly, I totally buy into that. Like when we get to like game design and game play, of course, what you call a thing is going to shape your relationship. Oh, for sure. That's sweet. I mean, we had talked about it in the first episode, how I want to avoid, like, naming my characters Rick, because I don't want people to be like, oh yeah, this character's name is Rick, and Jim likes Rick and Morty, this is going to be, like, I'm going to treat this character like I would treat Rick from Rick and Morty. Um, yeah, that is a problem I've run into, like, being, like, yourself associated with a character with the same name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny. I mean, there's the classic... I think about um, dichotomies being really funny in this circumstances. Mm -hmm. If you can, like, really make massive things with really simple names, it's cool. Like, uh, the Monty Python. There are some who call me... Tim! Tim. It, <laughs> just, it lands! It's, it's yeah, no, awesome there's, for I mean, there's a lot you can do with it. I, and, and obviously, subversion of expectations is gonna be funny, and it's gonna be fun, and it's gonna be oh, refreshing. Yeah. Um... But the I, subversion only works because you have those expectations, right? Because that yeah, exactly. already exists. Yeah, yeah. That's sweet. Um, it, yeah, in order to, like, break the script, uh, there needs to be a script, right? Uh, <laughs> you, you gotta, like, in order to go against the flow, there's gotta be a flow, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's the coolest name you've ever generated of your own brain? What you got? <laughs> I think my, my favorite name, my favorite character name that I've come up with is Semarin. For a one-shot, um, just like an old elf dude, Conjuration Wizard, um, the name comes from Myrcene, which is a uh, terpenoid. Um, I was taking a class on medicinal cannabis. We were learning about uh, terpenoids and cannabinoids, and I was like, you know what? I think it'd be, like, there, there are, um, like, TikToks out there and memes out there um, where it's you have to guess whether a name is uh, an antidepressant or a name of a touching <laughs> character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Let me use that, right? Uh, I, I wanted like a, a Tolkien-esque name. Um, so I just put Mercine in a word scrambler and I scramble, scramble, scramble until I got Semarin and I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. <laughs> that sounds sweet. Oh my goodness. What about you? I know way more of Houston's awesome names than I knew of yours, so I can think of a few examples for you. Oh, no, your own names. Of mine? Yeah. It's, so obviously they're all derived from pretty much something. Arkansas, I'm really fond of, even though you can't tell at a glance really how to pronounce it, which is a pet peeve of mine. Um, Emery Spade. What's up, Emery Spade? I really like saying Emery Spade. It I'll just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. It's just a nice name. Um, and uh, lock in, final answer, Argatum. Argatum is a, a Pragasvar entity that has not shown up yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, but will, um, which is funny. Oh boy! We have oh. One session left. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but Argatum, I just love the word, and of 
course, it has its whole onslaught of meanings, which might be spoilers at this point, but... I just won't Google it. It just sounds know. sweet. It just sounds <laughs> sweet. Right? Keep yeah. the tea. I just, I'm a sucker for sweet-sounding things. I believe in Yeats's old, um, if all of our labors don't seem a moment's thought, then the weaving and unweaving was for naught. Like that, you have to make all of your genius seem really fun to say. And like, seem a moment's thought. Oh, I agree. It's really well yeah. put. So, I like the names of mine that are the least flashy. The sometimes. the names that stick with you are the names that have a sort of rhythm. The names that sort 100%. of... You, you say the first syllable and the rest of it is strung along uh, as you're speaking. Dope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, for me... Um, my favorite name that I've made would be Extola Gwain, which comes from Extol, like to praise. Okay, or, yeah, I um, like it. And the, the character is very, very much a prideful character, and I think it like co really comes through in uh, how that name kind of came about and formed. Um, they also are very much like a family-based person, so they say their full name in any like situation. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I think That's how a character treats their name also pairs with the name itself. Yeah, and it's a, it's a really, like, fine detail that you can use well to design as yeah. your example. Um, I, I was thinking um, we could talk about some of the ways that we use to generate these names. For all you DMs uh, or world builders out there in the yeah, audience. That's who, good. Little nuggets of advice. If yeah. Take it or leave it, 100%. Big side perk of the show. Any one of you guys want to kick it off? Yeah. Sure, I'll you take do. it. Because um, you you got like Weiss, and yeah. you have like Pershing, <laughs> which I think I just learned the etymology yeah, of a I little bit, which is awesome. Like you've you've got the names, man. I usually take names of figures or um, people that I, like aren't very popular that I kind of wish I could talk about more, like in an actual setting. Um, because I have like a personal connection to that name, and so I can like imbue that into this character and kind of like show it off a little okay. bit That's in a way sweet. that I can't always, you know. Sure. Um, like I got the name Pershing from Robert Pershing. I read like a lot of his diaries yeah. in oh, my yeah. second year of college. Right. He was a doctor for Ray Charles. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so I, I really liked that name. Weiss was a street I grew up near. Weiss. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's nice to kind of, like, take something from your environment, throw it in a character, and, like, kind of, like, exemplify what it is to you. And that's how I kind of get my names. Weiss is, like, this primordial evil, too, right? Yeah. Like, it, it separates Saginaw, correct me if I'm wrong, city from township. Exactly. Yeah. So, houses on one side are worth a lot more than houses on the other. Like, quality of life and social benefits are way higher on one side than the other. Mm -hmm. So, the Weiss Street is made into this evil figure. Like, it was made into this dividing creature that s separates the world when yeah. it need to be. Like, what What a cool <laughs> genesis in the language alone for an arch-villain. <laughs> You're gonna play that character? Definitely. It. Like, it's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. I love everything like that. And it makes the design more personal to you. And I, I, I think it helps you invest. Um, and it's also a good way to pay, pay respect or uh, put disrespect uh, onto the sources of inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you can believe in the name, your players will too. That's yeah, that's for sure. That's how it goes a lot of the time, isn't it? Like, if you can put yourself in a certain emotional state, the rest just falls into place. That's yeah. all you, vibes over plans. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Shout out. Okay, yeah, my, my naming schematics. I've, I've got a few good tricks that I'm really fond of. One of my favorites is, um, I, I heard this tip in college um, about, it was a linguistics tip, and it was the idea that in most languages, if you take two sounds that occur commonly in the language and put them next to each other, it's usually taken. It's usually a word that's used. You rarely get vacancies. Interesting. And so I've often taken just two sounds that I really like in English and tried them back and forth and then tried similar sounds and mixed them and matched them until I found something that wasn't a taken word or that was a word but wasn't used often. Right? Okay. That's how I come into words like Kestrel or names like uh, Logan. I, that's a terrible example. That's a real name. <laughs> but Loken. Yeah, Logan. Logan. Okay. yeah. Totally different. Yeah, totally no, different. that that makes sense. Um, yeah, so. 
you get you get cool natural sounding names um, that still sound fantastical, right? That still sound outside of everyday parlance. Yeah, and when I hear Logan Wild, I don't think Logan at all. Sure, sure, runs away with you. So that's um, for like on the spot improv names. That's what I do a lot of the time. I'll just be like sound sound. And sometimes it's a name, and sometimes it's already a word, and sometimes I just said spade as the last name, which is, I don't know, a suit from a deck of cards or something. But um, for, for the big names, for names that I prep, I have different rules. Um, because taking huge inspiration from Murrah, from like Weiss and Pershing and the thousands of other examples I could conjure at a moment's notice, um, I take something that is emotionally founded for me, and I just change it up enough that you can't quite tell. Right? You tear the wings off of dragons to make them into sandworms, so this place is the Dune Wing. I change it to Dune Ving. Um, I was scared of awesome. leaving home because I'd fall in a coyote den when I was little, so I take the coyote den and I make it into Koya Den. And Koya Den. Oh, wow! That's so, awesome! Yeah. Uh, the Bellamonte hydroelectric dam that I studied for my last year and a half of college became Bellamon. Like, you just, <laughs> you just take something and pick and choose the tiniest sounds has always been my strategy. Um, and it's fun. It's yeah. just fun. It's, I like um, how you take like the first couple of syllables and the last couple of syllables and mash them together. Oh yeah, like old ship names, right? Yeah. <laughs> you oh know, yeah. You ship two people together. It's literally, I'm so fond of that trend. It's not yeah. what you mean. It's awesome. It's, it's a pretty common thing um, in the Japanese language to... Um, Shout out, I studied Japanese in college. Um, <laughs> Shout, out college. Shout out the Japanese language to, uh, secondary education. Like, a lot of times you get these magical, like, four syllables, um, and by uh, taking the first two syllables of, like, the first name and the first two of the last name or word or whatever, um, the, the best example is Dragon Quest becomes Dorakue. Doragon Questo, you just take the first Dorakue two syllables of each word, and it's it's everywhere. Um, a, a great example is Konosuba, right? Yeah, um, I was just looking at your desktop wallpaper, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah so um, really long title, Konosuba Rashi Sekai ni Kami no Shukufuku, or something like that. You just Konosuba, Konosuba Rashi, and you take the first couple syllables and mash it together uh, and it works awesome wait is that what they were doing in steins gate like when you have like characters like daru and stuff or that's just... a little bit different oh okay okay I, i've always been confounded by how nicknames come up in yeah. other languages sweet but yeah i mean all sorts of crazy stuff um i mean you can take and like if you learn other languages you can take inspiration from how they do things uh to come up with your names as well um, yeah, I guess I, so, I struggle. I struggle hard with names. <laughs> this has all been to say, <laughs> it's tough sometimes. Like, yeah, uh, so I, uh, I kind of fall back on these technical crutches. Um, I use an anagram generator. Uh, there's one online, like if you Google word unscrambler, but a lot of, uh, tools online are more focused on unscrambling already scrambled words uh, so that you can solve like uh, anagrams, anagrams or whatever like, uh, on your newspaper or whatnot. Um, so <laughs> I wrote one. Uh, if if you want to use it, uh, I have it in my GitHub repo, Grimoire Lazulum. I'll link that up uh, in the doobly-doo. Um, but yeah, a lot of great names come from just like rearranging words. Um, a, a really good example that I like is... Um, my, my continent, my world, uh, Alimnia, is uh, named, it's an anagram of Maya Lin, the artist who made the wave field in Ann Arbor. Um, I'd only ever been to the wave field once, and I've never met this artist, but still, when I was designing this continent, um, I was thinking a lot about um, the Karsh Mountains in Guilin, the Chinese uh, region Guilin, and... Um, I, I wanted, like, this place that had, like, gigantic hills um, that, you know, like, were above the clouds. And um, I guess I, I thought of a lot of names, and the best one that I came up with was, like, you know, I want to, 
respect the wave field because it was so cool when I saw it. I want to give, I want to take inspiration from that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I tried a bunch of things, um, and finally, Alimnia, it just clicked. It sounded like um, Limsa Lominsa from Final Fantasy XIV, and we had been wow. playing. I, I took a lot of inspiration from Final Fantasy XIV for this region of the world as well. Um, so it, I felt like it was a really effective name that just came from, like, scrambling letters. Um, that's sweet. And that's founded in D&D tradition, too. Oh, definitely. Like, going back to the earliest days, you have Vecna, the, like, demigod Vecna, which is just Vance. I mean, yeah. This yeah. is the dude that played it. Um, yeah, I, I think um, old school D&D also used to do a lot of backwards. Tons of stuff like um, that. Melf, one of the biggest wizards in D&D lore, is just Male Elf. was the original <laughs> name. The dude couldn't come up with a name for his character, so they called him Male Elf. And in the player's handbook, they abbreviated to Mel. That's awesome. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Uh, another example is um, there's a magic card called uh, Nivinural's Disc. Um, oh, that's and a good one. Yeah. It's, uh, it pays homage to Larry Niven's book, The Magic Goes Away. Uh, <laughs> and Nivinural is just Larry Niven backwards. Um, <laughs> Shout out every commander deck, or every uh, like pre-constructed commander deck ever. Nice. Yep. Shout out Neniac Nedrum, which was supposed to be a huge antagonist in Bragg's Far, which didn't end up happening. <laughs> which is just Morden kind of backwards. Oh my god. Would have been dope. That would have been awesome. So close. So close. Um, another tool that I use is a Markov generator. I think we'll probably do a separate video on that, just talking about like how those work. Um, but uh, I think there's there's one uh, in my GitHub repo as well. There's one um, that is on uh, the Donjon website. You can use whichever. Um, and the way that it works, kind of generally speaking, is it looks at, you, you put in a bunch of words into the source. Like you put in a bunch of names that you like, and it will um, map out uh, how likely each letter is to connect to another letter. Um, and then create a, a network that you can sort of probabilistically traverse um, and uh, get a lot of um, like letter combinations that you see pretty frequently in the source text. Um, an example that I have from that um, is Kurwok. Q U R W O K. Oh, your little chocobo. It's what, yeah, it's what I named yeah. my uh, legally distinct chocobo. <laughs> and um, the way that I got it was I took all of the bird names on Wikipedia, put them into my source, and generate, 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 generate until I found one that I kind of liked. Um, and I, I think it's a good name. Kurwak, like, it's got weird, funky letters. Um, I need your mouth and, for something to say. It. Yeah, and uh, the wok wok sounds kind of like a chicken. Um, I was gonna name them after Peeps, like the the candy. I just couldn't think of. I couldn't come up with anything. Yeah, that worked. I, I guess want a comparison. Yeah, yeah. Peep walks probably doesn't doesn't play as well. Yeah, <laughs> Peep yeah. Walks. beats me. Um, another one that I got uh, from my Markov generator was also um, Cirex. It's Cirex is like um, there are these like fox like creatures that. Uh, Put you to sleep. They they like exude pheromones that that put creatures to sleep. Um, and they're they're kind of like um, omnivores. And one of their their tactics is to go like cuddle up against creatures and you know like devour them once they've fallen asleep. Um, <laughs> and I, here I thought it was just the like uh, the aquatic version of the Tyrannosaurus Rex was the Sea Rex. And I'm like, oh, we're done. <laughs> this is it. Like, <laughs> yeah. C-I-R-E-X. I feel like it works. Uh, I, I just used a bunch of mammal names from Wikipedia and generate, generate, generate until I found something I like. Um, the inspiration for that creature was actually my dog, Max. Uh, I, you know, whenever he <laughs> hops up on me, like, you know, within five minutes, like, I'm starting to nod off and I, like, He's hypoallergenic, so I don't think it's an allergy, but I, I, like, I swear, he's got some, like, crazy pheromones or something that just, like, puts me to sleep. Your endorphins just, like, flood your brain. <laughs> yeah. And you're out. Um, they, like, my, my mom has said, she's like, oh, it's probably just because you're really relaxed. And I'm like, mom, like, within one minute of you jumping on me, I'm starting to nod off. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, it, it's not just re relaxing at that point. There's yeah, something wrong. There is, there are properties here. Properties at work. Um, 
Oh but yeah, uh, so, oh my god, and uh, the other thing I use my Markov generator for is uh, there are a lot of people in um, the city Cavalosa that I've been designing who have an Italian sounding name. All of those come from the Markov generator. Yeah. Just got a block of Italian surnames from Wikipedia and it, it comes up with gold. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it goes to show, like, it's an expressive tool for you at the end of the day. Yeah. If you give Jim a task, he's going to do it the gym way. He's going to find a bunch of resources. He's going to mix and match them. Like, you'll stick to the things that you do best. Yeah. And you'll you'll port those skills over. And it's sweet. It's I, I do the same thing, just in a totally different dimension, right? Yeah. Uh, I wanted you to talk about how you named the duality weapons, because I thought that that was really cool. That's really cool. Uh, he, like, algorithm to use. Yeah, so um, in, in Pragaspar generally, the naming tradition is like those ship names we talked about earlier, where um, you, when something is created by you, or a child is named after you, or you start a place, or this thing derives from you in any sense, you start it with the end of your name, right? So so Arlo Fix becomes Logan Wild, which is the... And the, the duality weapons have this second stringent clause where they need to have um, wild, vast, reaching, or far in them because of some BS prophecy I cranked out in like session four. If you don't That's have awesome. prophecy, yeah. and if your prophecy doesn't rhyme, you're not playing D&D. &D. You want to invalidate <laughs> your campaigns like that. But yeah, so there are a million examples of it. Um, Morakes is the place where the god Kestrel was born. So Morakes breeds Kestrel. Kestrel's dominion is the trail wire expense. So you can almost go Mora Kestrel wire and tell the story of like, yeah. the place in its genesis. And so it happens for families. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, shout out to Reno Fix, who kept his father's last name, Arlo Fixes, but took the re from Emery, his mother. So Emery oh, became cool. Reno. And they're just... It, it saves me a lot of time, because it means I have to come up with one or two syllables for every character I want to name, if I know, like, where they are or what they're from. Yeah. So. Also, rest in peace, Reno Fix. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. okay. Spoiler alert! Yeah, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen the anime. Yeah. Last session's gonna have a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not even the last Iron Light. That's gonna be in like five Iron Lights. <laughs> <laughs> he bites it. Bites it. <laughs> he bites it. It's not a big spoiler. What are your care? What are your PC's family members for, other than dying know, to dying, die dying uh, in front of them? Cap. Um, I've got a. I had a, a like a similar cycle of um, names that I did. Like kind of, um, where I where I took uh, made the last like syllable or last syllables significant. Um, so there are school of lightning wizards named um, Bergigo Dane, uh, Almina Dane, and Sarai Dane, um, named after the Dragon Quest lightning spells. Uh, Japanese what? names. Yep. The uh, I, Zapple is Rai Dane. Um, uh, Kazapple is Minadane, and Hellzapple, which is like only in one of the games, is uh, Jigodane. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll use the last syllables of their name and then put something in front of it. Um, <laughs> and I, I had to come up with names for like a lot of students, um, so I just got kind of like clever with it. Um, a, a pair of uh, sisters that you guys haven't met yet, Radiance Domain Wizards, um, are named uh, Hina Lapris and Karina Lapris, and um, that's because the Japanese word for light is Hikari. Hina, oh, okay. Karina. Yeah. Hina, Karina. No, that's cool. Sweet. Oh my god. It's so, it's so dorky. It makes so much into it though, right? Yeah. There you go again. Like, a, a name that couldn't be anything else. Huey, what you pull off all the time, which I'm fond of, are you're, you don't have a significant character without an epithet. Like, oh, oh yeah. You, oh, oh yeah. You do first name that sounds dope, and then comma, and then the blank, or off blank, or for blank. Yeah, I, I have to associate people with some like abstract idea. It it, it, it must be done. It's <laughs> it's too cool. Okay. <laughs> it's sweet. It's sweet. Yeah. Um. You kind of like you you kind of did that with like Linda Bass, the Sky Pillar. Yeah. Um, okay. All the dualities. Yeah. The du all the dualities. I, I really liked those. I, I was gonna steal some actually. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Good artist copy, great artist steal. Exactly. I think it's unfortunately true. it's like so hard to be uninspired to create a name, and so you're gonna end up stealing one way or another. Just just do it 
in a cool way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Epithets are dope. Everyone should have some. Oh, absolutely. I, why don't I have one? I'm asking myself for You're the first the time. You're the Oh! Yeah. <laughs> the, d- d- take this out in post. The pinner boy did not just say he doesn't yeah. I, okay, <laughs> man, I, I'm gonna have to edit the crap out of this. So. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to. <laughs> but of course, the video that you're watching on YouTube, he just traced the outside. <laughs> 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 and they're like, well, I think it looked great. Let's just save that one. <laughs> but no, it's good. Um, shout out to, um, oh, there's a Greek philosopher. Who is it, Jimmy? The Obscure. Is it Theocritus? Is it, I don't remember. I think it's Theocritus or something. The Obscure. And I'm like, that's the coolest. What do you have to do to be called The Obscure? Like, right. <laughs> awesome. Don't I can just use the Cynic. The Cynic. Yeah, that's a solid one. <laughs> that's, um, we see that a lot with Planeswalker cards, though, in Magic, though, right? Totally. Hmm. That yeah. sounds a good press. Jace, the Mind Sculptor. He's an architect of thought. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Bellerin sounds lame after that. It's yeah. uh, pretty common sure. in um, Hindi. A lot of uh, Hindu gods um, have, like, you know, I think 108 is kind of like the magic number of epithets that they have. And, and a lot of, um, like, chants uh, are basically just uh, when you want to uh, invoke this god, you'll say all of their epithets. Oh, it's like counting a rosary, but... 3,000 times cooler, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's dope. You know, um, in the Dragon Prince, actually, they there's a dragon, the like the god of like, lightning. Um, his name is Avizandium, and it's like this big, powerful name. But the humans who like killed him didn't like know what his name was. They didn't like, speak the language. They gave him like, their own name. They just called him Thunder. So that was like <laughs> another way to get like an epithet. Yeah. Just different groups kind of seeing the same entity. And that's that, awesome. That's the kind of thing that's awesome in real life, but would be so hard to do in D&D. Is like names that are made up by the people because they experience something a certain way. Right? Yeah. Like this thing is given a name over the course of years. Happens in the real world all the time. Yeah. It's awesome when it does. But, oh jeez. Trying to recreate that in fantasy world. Now you're, now you're putting your time in. Yeah. Yeah. Students of history. That's the detailed design that uh, we want for all of you guys. <laughs> this could be you someday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out uh, Attila the Hun, the Scourge of God. Yeah. What's up? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, dude. Uh, all of life is really just trying to earn some cool epithets. I think at the end of the day, if your headstones like pack tight, if the place that carves it doesn't charge by the letter, you're set. I don't know what my epithet is. Mm. Wow. Kind of... The supplanter. The supplanter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grow into it. <laughs> kind of comes full circle. Uh, I suppose you're probably the designer and he the dissector now. No, it's actually the opposite. Because I do more of the, the natural science stuff. I'm helping my cousin yeah. with biology. <laughs> um, so you do design? I'd be designing and he'd be dissecting. Yeah. I think of you as like Claymore Patch with the scalpel, and I think of Jim as like Brilliance is that guy. That's really interesting. That's a, yeah, I guess that's another one. I didn't even question it to me. It was like, oh, design and dissect. <laughs> that's so that's funny. an awesome name for a podcast. <laughs> that's all right. Maybe, maybe you guys will switch seats. Well, we've got them both. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really good sign that we did a good job naming our podcast. That's we actually one. generated a lot of names for the podcast that didn't pan out. Yeah. Like Shut up. <laughs> Imagination overflow, which is already a thing. <laughs> it's so good! How many of them do you Google? It's, it's terrible. Yeah. I remember uh, there was a cool little horror game now called Little Nightmares that was originally called Hunger. Yeah. But as they were like, they were in post, they were about to release it, the Hunger Games comes out. <laughs> and takes over. <laughs> like, social media, they're like, oh, we can't. We can't, they're gonna look up Hunger Game, they're gonna get... Suzanne Collins now, so, um, yeah. Speaking of, I actually created a feature for a monster called Little Nightmares. There you inspired go. Inspired by that game. Oh, what's going on, <laughs> it's man? It's coming in. That's awesome. Seriously, people love references so much. That's another thing with, um, Cal's Bond abilities in Praggis Bar. I want to give those sweet-sounding names, so I just take sweet titles from history and put them in the, into the game, right? I've got, like, War and Peace, like, Final Fantasy. Yeah. Divine Comedy. Like, those are just badass names for abilities. So... War of the Spark, was it? War of the Spark. War of the Spark. That was a great one. Especially if you can find things that actually influenced 
like either your design for the ability or the characters that you're referencing. Yeah. It's chef's kiss. Oh, for sure. See in person, but. And I mean, sometimes it's not that complicated. Sometimes you've got lightning wizards and you name them after lightning spells and that's kind of all that you set them up to be, but... Dude, Stormbrave? It's a cool name. Stormbrave! Storm Thank you! Um, Brave. Like, it's not rocket science. Yeah. It's just, it's badass. Stormbrave it actually is, like, one of the best names I've come up with. Hard um, to agree. I take a lot of inspiration for this campaign from Wizard 101. <laughs> um, you know, the, the OG. Um, and, of course, I was School of Storm. Um, so, balance, my people in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, balance. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, I wanted to pay homage to that. Um, the other thing is that the four domains of magic are lightning, radiance, creation, and uh, force, um, which are all things that storms kind of generate. Um, wow. we, the force domain, we, we call it the school of winds. Um, and obviously, when you have a storm, you have wind. You have lightning. You, uh, when you have rain or hail, that's creation. Um, and then the, the light in the sky, the light that the lightning makes, um, and rainbows are all uh, radiance. Um, so I think that worked out. There's also a lore reason as well. So it's, I mean, we've got kind of three lines of what makes this name work for me. Um, the, the, uh, the lore explanation is that, um, you know what? No spoilers. We'll, no we'll spoilers. talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. Alright, alright. Fine, fine, fine. He won't give the people what they want. Spoil it for two of your players, that's pretty egregious. Yeah, we'll have a video up here whenever he, uh, mentions it, I guess, over there. Yeah, <laughs> alright. Okay, you know what? Without going into too many details, um, basically, uh, there was historically this flood that um, wiped out a lot of the uh, settlements on the continent. Um, but this small like farming village had um, a pair of wizards, a pair of mages, a pair of uh, people who could use magic, and um, they basically like kept the flood at bay while the people wow. escaped uh, to a higher elevation. That is some religious action right there. Yeah. So they braved the storm uh, so that the the people could survive. That's dope. Excellent. Shout out to, uh, obviously, that's a Dune spoiler, so that's actually a douchey thing if I say. <laughs> well, cover, I'll plug my ears. It's not that bad, no. There's a character 3,500 years into the future of the books that's named Noah Arkwright. Because a character who can remember something like Noah's Ark, like, can make jokes, basically. Like, bakes yeah. all of old terminology into the new language. As That's kind of awesome. Humor for themselves, because <laughs> nobody else is going to remember back that far. Like, it's yeah. just, it's a personal thing. That's really funny. That, uh, Noah Arkwright sounds a lot like, um, an NPC name that I designed, um, Tiro Arklier. You guys actually have met this guy. Uh, and his name is, um, an anagram of Carrie Taylor. Who was my first uh, friend in classes at U of M? Carrie Taylor was um, like an older guy. I think he was sixty at the time, going back to school. And I was like, "That's you know, I'll make a a, a wizard who's kind of like old, but uh, he's going back to school with all these people." Oh, that's um, cool. So, Tiro Arklier. The second best time to start is right now. You know, the best was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Shout out if you're out there. Yeah. Taylor, how you doing? Chilling. I hope so. Oh, yeah, definitely. If you're watching Design and Die section, you're having a good time. Take oh, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Friday when you're watching this. All right, so um, do you guys, for the last little bit here, just want to talk about a few of the names that you liked and a few of the names that you didn't like that you came up with? Okay, yeah, sure. Like, ever? <laughs> yeah. I've come up with some bad names in all my time. That yeah. definitely happens. Again, anything even tangentially phallic. I remember uh, the attendant you probably don't even remember this. The sidekick to uh, Strahd von Zarakovich, or whatever his name is, uh, was Diz. And you just called him Jizz. Like, that's just in both of you in high school. Yeah. That was just, that was what you called the little kid. I believe it. It broke my heart. <laughs> Look at it. It was supposed to be. I'm so sorry. That's what you do when you're murder hobos. That is, that's the For problem. like six years. <laughs> that's true. That was a good genesis. Oh, the dick jokes. 
Um, Pragus Bar's names I'm really proud of. Improv names anytime before that were terrible in my childhood. I, I literally just, um, I started alphabetizing kids A through Z. So they were like, the A wing was a character that came up a lot, right? And there was the B wing and the C wing. And it was like these, so I didn't have to name kids. I made a part of an alliance where they just picked a letter. <laughs> what? It was like Codename Kids Next Door, like action. Oh, that's why. Shout out. Only real ones remember Codename Kid Next Door. Number I three, dude. Number yeah. three was my guy? What's up? So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like if you really do it your way, like if you try, you're gonna have good names. It's gonna be fun. Just just try to keep the fluidity. Like, don't make it a bigger issue. Yeah. It has to be a lot of time. A-wing, B-wing, C-wing uh, reminds me of this dumb bit from Bravest Warriors where there was um, a character named Captain Seward, I think. Um, and Spectacular. There was a... Uh, Seward? Um, Seward? Like, yep. S-E-A-W-A-R-D. Yeah. Oh <laughs> but God. there was also, like, a lady named, like, uh, awesome. it was, like, Lady F-word or something. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Right. And there's that subversion. Um, <laughs> That's funny. At least you're so good. That is good. Way to see it. Yeah, seaward seems like a perfect name for a captain until yeah. you realize it's C hyphen word. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, shout out the compendium. Oh, literally my head cover that's poetic right there. It is inside of my head. The whole of time. Um, oh, yeah. Compendium of names. Um, it's it's just you pick the lore thing that you like when you read as a kid, and you just say the names from it for the next couple of years. Absolutely. And just in case. And people on Reddit were merciless about that, too. Yeah, that hurt. Get over it. Yeah, um, was, great but... artists steal. And you probably stolen, too. And, it, <laughs> like, when you don't have the entire internet to scrutinize you, it makes for a pretty fun game. Oh, good point. Like, when you think about it, your name, whoever is watching this, was probably named after someone else. <laughs> good one. <laughs> and it probably wasn't as badass as Manathera. Exactly. So, oh. yeah, so get some. <laughs> you got any bad names? Any real bad names? So they weren't terrible, but I think in retrospect I shouldn't have used them. Like, I used Glitch for a city. Um, because I wanted it to be weird, this weird location where, like, the inhabitants had been, like, trapped in these crystals, um, and, like, strange magic stuff was going on. But all my players were expecting, like, some Undertale ending of, of the campaign, and yeah. it just never came. And so they are like, kind of left dry and bereft of, like, their wow. expectation. So, like, if there's an expectation with the name, you can, sub sub you can subvert it, but don't just ignore it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, that's a really good, uh analysis right there yeah some of the worst names are ones that kind of set up something that you didn't intend um one of my bad names that i actually have written down here is the solidus the the currency of cavalosa and the reason that i kind of regret that is because i abbreviated it as soul um <laughs> and these my players all thought that when I they got to the so city long. Yeah, that, like, souls were the currency. Uh, and I was like, that is not what I meant. Um, the, the reason that the um, dark, maybe. they're called solidus is as kind of a, an elongated form of solid. Um, because, basically, when you have a, a school of magic that can create, like, anything, or not anything, but can create, like, precious gems and metals, that stuff kind of loses its value. And if you had an economy based on that, um, it kind of like fails yeah when it miserably. Fails itself out right away um so that actually happened in the history of this town <laughs> or, or the city and um what kind of like sprung up uh like you know as this as like currency is failing is people just exchanging favors like do me a solid do me a solid so they they minted coins um that were represented the solid you had to do someone yeah the solid um, that's so cool <laughs> and and the solidus is like works as a currency because um they all have uh an enchantment on them that when um they're exchanged they make a pinging sound um, creating sound is very complex uh, force domain magic, so it's not something that your run-of-the-mill counterfeiter can just like make a bunch of. Wow. Shout out to maybe the greatest DM tool that I've never used or seen used, a soundboard. Like, next, if I do another big campaign in the years to come, I'm gonna have a soundboard on deck. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. If only for like slide whistles and like 
shout out fart jokes. <laughs> I feel like there's a ton of potential there. I've thought about it at times, but there's just so much to manage behind the screen. That's probably true. It, it helps when you have other players run the music, but I, I like to control the music. So. That's true. Shout out. Shout out. See that as Charlie is just the DJ. Yeah. Maybe I'll make one of you guys do a sound, like run the soundboard instead of the soundtrack. It's so much cool. fun, man. You can't <laughs> give me that power. I, would, I think I would Houston is it. the only one yeah. that I could trust with it. Poor Sam. Dude, Sam would be playing nonsense always. <laughs> You're the it. old car home. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. When my players have a, um, a, it's kind of like a sending stone, but it's contact other plane instead. Oh, neat. Um, and so whenever they like get, like receive a call from it, I literally call them and they can, they can <laughs> I call my friend who's like, has the open mic so you can hear the iPhone ringtone in the background. <laughs> Everyone's like, shh, 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 we're getting a call. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> oh my God. And um, tangentially related uh, voice modifiers. Voice oh, voice mod. They yeah. use those in Chain of Akron, uh, Matt Colville's thing. That's awesome. It's dope. It's dope. Yeah, there's there's a lot of tech out there. Um, I think we're going to start a, a, a new like side series. I mean, we've got this side series on uh, special topics. I think we'll do one on tech uh, and how it can augment D&D um, or tabletop role-playing games at large. And we're going to have to do a lot of research Dude, for that. <laughs> absolutely. There's a really good line that um, every artistic revolution is predicated upon a technical revolution first. Yeah, that's so a good like, point. You don't have uh, Jane Austen's novels until you have the novel. You don't have critical role until you have streaming and stuff yeah. like that. So um, you don't have really you don't have the novel until you have the printing press. Yeah. So <laughs> so you need the tech if you're gonna expand artistically and expressively in new dimensions. And we should use that for D and D. For sure. Um, other than that, uh, any closing remarks, any other names you want to talk about? Um, I think people spend the most time thinking about names when they're thinking about, like, baby names. Um, yeah. and there are historically terrible baby names, I'm gonna be honest. Right. Swings and misses all throughout time. Yeah. So, avoid those. <laughs> Name a kid something cool, but immediately, like, understandable at a glance. I don't know. That's not even fair, because people's understandings are totally different, depending on where they oh, yeah. are. Like There's no rule. I mean, good luck. <laughs> um, if, if you live in a world that I designed, don't name your kid Blake, Raven, or Lilith. Because uh, <laughs> they'll end up in They get into some bad stuff. In a situation. They get, we get put in a situation. And we There's a little bit of nominative world. determinism there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What a what a beautiful circular <laughs> truth to bring it all over. <laughs> and the snake eats its own tail again here on Design and Dissection. All right, well, um, that's been Design and Dissection. Wearing my inspiration on my forehead for this one. Shout out the Iron Light Show. Yeah, and mine on my shirt, if backwards. <laughs> I don't know if it will be. Oh, mine on my shirt, too. Shout out Crazy Jim's Blimpy Burger. Uh, cheaper than food, best meal in Ann Arbor. <laughs> awesome slogan. What's my shirt? It's, oh, it's Ina from that one internet series. You should look it up. ENA. ENA. Mm -hmm. YouTube. That's us. That's us. Charlie here, co-host of the uh, Iron Light Show. We're here to talk about names. Um, when it comes to names, I really, you know, Jim, his Markov generators, his anagrams. I, uh, obviously, you know, a solid name, alliteration or otherwise, uh, that's an important, that's an important fundament onto which uh, to build a character, right? That's, that's, a, that's an important thing. Uh, but... Coming up, for, coming up with names for me really tends to just be borrowing from real people. Um, you know, I know Jordan, he will hear names of his students and, uh, and jot them down and name his characters after them. It's the same for me. I recently named a character Yoni after one of my, one of my kids at the elementary school where I, where I substitute teach. Um, I was at a party the other day. This guy introduced himself to me as Griff. Just jotted that down. It's 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 really important to you know. I think just just borrow from real life. I don't think I could ever come up with names better than real people could. Um, 
And yeah, and I, I just keep a long list of NPC names um, in my D and D notes just to draw from. Inevitably, when one of my characters asks the name of an NPC, um, and even then, the list sometimes fails me. So I'll just make stuff off the, make stuff up off the top of my head. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not, it's not sacred. I kind of trust myself in a lot of ways to come up with something good. I think, uh, and, and the last thing I'll leave with is one of the big improv moments when I was just starting out DMing for my campaign right now, Josadius. Um, a a crowns guard, the equivalent of the the police, the authorities, um, in my world, uh, he had this goofy, um, loping Southern accent, and they asked him his name, and I came up with Hicklebrick. Uh, so obviously he's become a fan favorite. Um, I've heard I've heard advice that you'd never really want to come up with NPC names in advance, right? Because whatever you come up with in the moment is going to be way funnier and way better uh, than something you jotted down in advance.